Hello, good evening. God bless you. Welcome to Broken Chains Church, where God is alive and well and moving by His Spirit. Amen. If you haven't experienced it, just give Him a try. Sorry, there's. I couldn't tell what this was in the carpet. If it was gold dust, rubies, or what, or somebody had dropped something off of their something else. I remember whenever we first started having stuff appear in the church, and I I did a total ban on all glitter and everything else and <laughs> searched everything so that nobody could say that we were hauling it in. And guess what? It stuff just kept showing up. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when it's God, you don't have to work it up. You don't have to make it up. You don't have to even do anything. I mean, he, and some people say, well, I have a hard time believing God would do something like that. Well, uh -uh. He's God. He does as He pleases. And if He can speak the world into existence, what is really too hard for Him? Besides that, we can find almost all these things in the Bible. And I, I can't remember the verse now. I wish I could remember it. Last time, I, last, time, last, time, last time I was down home, me and Pastor Billy were hanging out together late one night. And... Uh, he said, the next time somebody tells you that's not in the Bible, that's not God, I wish I could remember the verse. It's Psalm, over in Psalm somewhere. But anyways, it just says, it pretty much says, well, I did it. I'm going to do what I want because I'm God. And God did it, so there it is. That's BB's version. And he, uh, he, uh, he said, so the next time they try to tell you that's not in the Bible, that can't be from God. He said, just give them that verse and walk away. <laughs> I said, well, nobody's telling me that yet. And he said, they will. <laughs> and if you don't know who Pastor Billy is, he's my spiritual dad. He'll be around here sometime within the coming year. He comes up every year, checks on us, and makes sure everybody's doing all right. He loves you all very much. He talks all the time about how proud he is of you and everything what he's doing for the Lord and all that. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Warm and good, blessed and highly favored. I know how that warm is. I had air, my biggest air conditioner started short cycling this week and couldn't keep up. It, it got hot in there. We laid hands on it the other night and it's still short cycling, but it's cool in my house. I don't care how God is doing it, but it's cool. So praise God for that because it was hot. He just soaked in sweat. But I'm so thankful that God loves us. Amen. You know, He didn't. He didn't call us just to get by, you know. You know what happens when you get the attitude you're just getting, you, you, you get the attitude of I'm just getting by. You're always going around going, oh my. I'll let that sink in for a minute. Whenever when you get the attitude of just getting by, you, you find yourself always walking around going, oh my. But when you realize that God calls you not to just survive but thrive, things will start shifting. And, and you come alive. There we go. See, look at that. I'm getting help now. Lord. And, you know, as we've been learning about that, you say, where's, where's he leading all this? Listen, Holy Ghost ain't let me down yet. You know, now, if I was up here on my own doing all this foolishness, this ain't foolish. This is the Holy Ghost. But if I was up here just trying to act like this and be whatever, it wouldn't make any sense. It'd be just silly. But we're doing this because we've been studying about the roadmap in Proverbs. Amen. And if you'll get the roadmap in, you'll uh, you'll start realizing that there's way more to life than just getting by. And God didn't call you just to survive. And you also realize that you have an active part in it by applying the wisdom of God and walking it out step by step. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Now. Is it God's fault if you if you go off dancing over in a minefield and step on a mine? <laughs> Whenever you had the whole path in front of it? You know, a lot of people, they think it's silly sometimes when we talk about roadmaps and sit in front of you blessings and curses. And a lot of people don't think it's real. They realize that they were literally going through, a, a, sometimes the enemy has set up landmines for them. And God gave them a perfect path out of it. But they wouldn't even know they were in the landmines. I remember one time during a very prophetic service, God gave me a word. It was something about dancing through the mine, minefields. I still remember that. God, God downloaded all kinds of cool revelation that night. You know, but when you realize... Uh, 
that's what the <coughs> wisdom of God is. It changes things. But you you know, first you got to realize, you know, you, you do have somebody that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But we don't have to worry about it if we follow the roadmap so much. Now, does that mean you'll never have a bad day? No. Does that mean you won't ever have to test your faith? No, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean that God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. It means His peace and His joy will go with you. It means that you, you know, how would you like to go into a fight knowing that as long as you stay standing, you've already won? Because that's what the Word of God promises. And if he'll do, you'll let Him do the fighting, you'll start seeing some things shifting, right? And so we've been doing that, and we're coming up to Proverbs chapter 7. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, we're taking vacation after tonight. We're, uh, well, I won't be leaving probably till early, late Saturday night, early Saturday morning. She's looking at me. We're not on the same page at this moment. <laughs> Sometimes Saturday it looks like. Saturday. <laughs> Early, she hopes. I plan on being in Sioux Falls, South Dakota come Saturday night. That's about 10 hours. We've got several days like that to get to our destination. So, last night here, and we're starting into Proverbs chapter 7. All this does go together to stay with me. And so as I was praying tonight, I, I've got it all broke down. We're going to look at some of it just a little bit to do a refresher. But then after we just do a little bit we're going to just get a general consensus of chapter 7. I'm not going to dive into it all tonight. It was going to take us if I did. I'd get you all worked up on something, and then it'd be a couple weeks before we dug it back into it, and you done forgot what I started on. I'd have to reteach it anyways. Well, hopefully you wouldn't forget it. But, you know, it's not a... Okay, Lord, Lord yes, I'll do a better job. Regular. Proverbs chapter 7 is one of the few chapters of Proverbs that is connected from the very first verse to the very last verse. And it's a streamline. So when we start it, we don't want to break the stream. Okay, that's much better. And so then after that, after we go over an overview of it, I know some of you are like, well, I've only been here a couple of this and that. Listen, this is just to the, the do the best that you can. But I will say the best that you can is better than blank. So only if you got one thing from something, you know, to pass the tent when you come up to hell. After we do that, the Lord told me to uh, do this. We're going to do a Proverbs overview, chapters 1 through 6, a list, list at least three things that you have learned, applied, and how they have impacted your life for the positive. And so then I'm going to give you some time to write this down. And then we're going to spend some time as a corporate body discussing that. Hopefully exalting God, exalting the Word of God, and almost be a testimony time of what you've already gleaned from God during this time. And hopefully maybe bringing up some fresh nuggets that somebody else needs at this moment in time. Now... Just do the best you can. We'll be doing a military consensus at the end. If you don't know what that is, hang out. It'd be fun. Yes, ma'am. What? We will after at the end. Some things. And then when we get done with that, we're going to have a prayer time. And somewhere in there, the Lord just reminded me, I'll take the offering. But right now, I've already forgotten what we're doing. So please be faithful to church while we're not here. Please support the people that will be ministering. Please support the Lord. They are working hard. They're praying into it. It's going to be a good time, I believe. Amen. If you have a Bible tonight, I didn't even give you your sheets yet because I don't want you to have to hang on to them for weeks. But we can put it up, up on the one of version up on the screen for you. If our, if our tech knows how to do that. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1. It says, My son... Keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Does that sound? Is anybody starting to hear a broken record? How many thinks that keeping his commandments must be kind of a big deal? Now, remember how we discussed how we couldn't do that in our own strength, but through 
the new covenant with Christ through His grace and His mercy. And that grace doesn't mean He co just covers our sins. That word grace means He empowers us to overcome so that through our weakness, His strength is made perfect. So when you're feeling at your lowest point, that's just the beginning of God. If you'll turn to Him and rely on Him, His grace will... First you have to admit, God, I'm struggling here. I need to repent. I'm struggling in this area. Help me. And then He will come in like a flood and help you overcome that area. Amen? Are you all still with me? But So instead of just going, oh, that don't apply to me, because then you're just being foolish and you're bringing all those curses on from the, that God warns you about that He doesn't want you to have, or you could just say, no, I want to be wise. I want the blessings of God. Amen? So, and, so then it goes on down. and Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thy eye. Now that's an old English saying. Usually we'd have other translations that would help you. Does anybody know what that means, the <laughs> apple of your eye? Your focus, the your point, your laser thing. They some used to call your uh, what's that? In the, is it iris? Is that the your pupil and then inside the head? But they used to call that there. So that's where they used to say. So it's the thing that you're focused in on the most. So this bind them upon your fingers, write them upon the table of your heart. So say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinsman. So. He's been saying this over and over for seven chapters. Do you think he, he knew that sometimes we needed to do it drilled into us? Amen? And so, you know, a lot of people, people have opinions. People have thoughts. And it's okay to have opinions and thoughts. Just don't let anything that isn't lined up with the Word of God rule you. No matter how good the opinion or thought you think it is, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's going to lead you into a mess. And so, that they may keep thee from the strange one, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Like I said, we're not going to teach all this tonight, but, you know, everybody everybody knows that he'll keep... How, how, about, how many would rather be kept from a smooth talker than have to be worried about being seduced by one? And this is saying, if you'll follow this, it'll keep you from all those smooth-talking people that are out to destroy your soul. Amen? And so, uh, then it goes on in the next few verses, it's talking about a woman who's, it's talking about the spirit that's actually coming and hunting for these young men and young women. I mean, I'm going to tell you, there's a spirit that's moving through the earth today that's hunting for men and women, that sexual immorality, lust, adultery, anything above God, it's coming. And we see these things. The great news is we have Christ now. He's given us authority over it. First John 4, 4. Greater is He that is in me than He is in the world. But God gave us wisdom right here in the Word of God of how to not even have to deal with it. How good is that? And one of my favorite part verses is this. I'm sure I'll cover it a lot more in another night. And uh, But it's verse 22. It says, He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. Has anybody ever led an ox to the slaughter besides me? Probably anybody here? One. They don't know where they're going. They think you're taking them to get them ice cream. <laughs> they are happy about wherever you're leading them. You, give them. you think you're getting a bucket of corn or, or <clears throat> anything else that they might want at that time. They're just happy-go-lucky all the way up to the time you shoot them in the head and slaughter them and eat them. And that is what happens if you're not paying attention to this wisdom. By the time it happens to you, you're just carefree. I think you're having a good time going right along with this thing right up to the point it's slaughtering you. Now, wouldn't it be smart? I tell you, when I read this as a young man, it jumped out at me. And I said, I am staying away from that. That will eat my lunch. I don't want to be like an ox not knowing I'm going to get killed till it's too late. I don't want to destroy my life and not know that it even had me until it's over. And so that's one reason why you need to really pay attention. And then it says, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. You know, there were people back in the day that thought it was all fun and games until they ended up getting corrected. So this whole verse is dealing, this whole chapter 
is dealing with that spirit that we've already been talking about and taking an in-depth look at it and recognizing tells of what it is, how it's coming, what it's, what it's uh, manifesting as, and how just to stay away from it. And does that sound like a good idea to anybody? So come back in a couple of weeks. Come back in a couple of weeks and we will go over it again. We will dive into it deeply and find every secret we believe that's in there to uh, keep you from it. I mean, some of these things it says she'll come up and she you know, uh, says uh, she met him at the corner. She was waiting for him in the dark. She perfumed her bed. She had performed all these things. You know, she had done everything to seduce him. Now there's a reason why I already touched on this and had it going way deep, but there's a reason why the Bible says there's a marriage bed and keep it undefiled. And there is certain things that's supposed to go on in a marriage bed, and she's doing those things, but she's doing it with someone who's not her husband. And that's why it's important to have a healthy marriage. And if you're if you're if you're not married, not in those things, the Bible says flee from fornication. It don't tell you how to fight it. It don't tell you how to talk about it. It says run. You know, and when somebody comes up and they get you in their sights and they think you're just all that in a bag of chips, or if it's on, if it's maybe it's just your surf with your TV, that thing, that spirit, reach out and grabs you, you better, you better just cut the, cut away from it because it's wanting to take you. It does not stop, just as this verse said, until it takes you all the way to the slaughterhouse. That's its design. But I'm so thankful that we have men and women in God that can pray for us, intercede for us, help break that thing so we can come back in our right mindset. And I'm so thankful that we don't have to go there unless we want to. Because God loved us so much, He gave us a roadmap to stay out of there. Amen? That is what's coming up. Now I hope you know why. And you can look, as you look through the chapter 7, you can see where it's all tied together. So I didn't think it would do any good to really... Start in, in, in chapter 7, maybe one of the few chapters we do. I'm going to try to do it all in one night. We'll see. Everybody like, we're going to be here all night. I read it. I saw you all. You, all like, you didn't think nothing about being short. Your thought was, we're going to be here all night. <laughs> so to our Proverbs overview. Everybody got your paper? Everybody got a pen. Does anybody need a pen? Pastor Tammy, can we, we got some new people that need some pens. Get some pens from office. Or your pens. I gave you a whole bunch of your old life. So she's going to get some pens. Does anybody have any questions about what we're looking for or what we're doing here? Any questions at all? All right. That is our time for this evening. Glory to God. Listen, if you've only got one, you got two, you got three, it's all good. I'm just obeying the Lord, so this only works if everybody participates, talks, expounds, all those things. Now, who wants to go first tonight? Brother Matt? All right. I've been here a week. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been great, so I'm back for a week too. Praise God. Something I've learned already is there are forces out there that are bent to destroy your soul. Yeah. They're going to do it. They're going to turn your head. They're going to do some pretty crazy things in order to follow their way. And I've learned to run away. What I've learned to do is trust the Lord, just to give it to Him. Don't Amen. worry about it. You have control over what you say to other people. Just stay away from it. There's just no good or good. Praise God. That's a pretty good nugget, man. How many of y'all think that's a good nugget to learn the first weekend? Yeah, that'll that'll take you that'll take you places, brother. I, I can promise you. Not because it's the word of God. Amen. Yeah, good stuff. Good way to start. Who wants to go next? It was a tie almost between Rebecca and Bobby. You two pick which one you wants to go first. Right. <laughs> and, they're, and they're now preferring one another. Well, number one was give sin a microphone. And 
one thing that's made me more careful about what I watch on TV. Because, I mean, I'm not really anywhere to do anything. I'm more home than anything. Yeah. And that's the one thing that influences a lot. So I, I'm real careful about what I'm watching. It's tall. Yeah, that was good. Um, this is nothing new, but drink from your own well. I mean, Kevin's gone a lot, but it's never in my mind it'll show up somewhere else. Amen, hey, hey, amen. Hey, hey. I know it's not yeah, that, that van is paid for. You <laughs> <laughs> have been here, brother Kevin. Um, <laughs> amen, amen. Anything anybody wants to interject? I forgot to give it one brother Matt gave it a chance. If anybody wants to comment, agree, speak with her, encourage her. I know y'all don't know what this looks like, but it starts with our lips going like this. <laughs> Come on, so how many would how many agree you got the maybe you got the same nugget? Say, hey, we okay, sister Heather, what you? Oh, that sister Rebecca's. If I was still just trying to get us started, that's good. If that's it, listen, I don't know exactly what all we're supposed to do tonight because I got the same agenda you got, the same words you got. The Lord told me to do it. Yes, ma'am. I could apply to that. Well, I didn't know how to write it down in words, so I didn't put it down. Oh, no, I put, Drink from your own well, but Jesus is the one that was satisfied. Drink from your own well. Amen. That was some good meat. If you don't know what that is, and you're catching up with us, I strongly encourage you to go back. We have every video online. And you can catch up with us, and you'll be exactly where we're at. And, we, and I, I have a... I have a habit, I guess, of building on top of what I teach. Um, so it's good. Yeah, I'm with I'm with uh, Sister Bonnie. So well, I guess we're gonna we're gonna take this. I guess I could have done a better job for casting the vision. So we're gonna. You guys are doing great. We're just gonna. You guys share what you got. If anybody wants to encourage them or agree with them, just let let them have it. You know, we are full gospel spirit filled you can shout amen in here we're, we're kind of turning into a baptist church y'all are quiet all the time nothing against baptist but uh, you have permission to get excited if something resonates with your spirit amen all right sister rebecca well that's a mouthful anybody Pastor Tammy, now that we've had three people go and we're learning, will we get the microphone and hand it to them so oh, we can hear what no. you're saying? Oh. That's a great idea, isn't it? Yeah. Just talk loud. Huh? Just talk loud. Rebecca, they want to hear what Rebecca had to say. Be wise, listen to correction, and don't be rebellious. And when I was at work, there's times I've had to be corrected on certain things, and I accepted it, worked on it, and kept my heart right. Praise God. That's a, that's a mouthful there, isn't it? That's some good wisdom nuggets to what glean. And Sister Heather was, was next. Has anybody, anybody else had to, had to learn to do that? Oh, yes. Amen, amen. Oh, yes. Me too. I have a lot. <laughs> Learned so much, but just to guard your heart from that seducing spirit, um, just being careful what you watch and look at, allow your heart, allow, or what you allow in your heart, um, just gave me a deeper understanding of how important it is to guard your heart of those things. Um, get wisdom means to apply the whole counsel of God to your life and to be quick to judge yourself um, so that you won't be judged. Uh, don't kick against the goats and allow God to work on you. And God desires you to live an abundant life, and that's by following His wisdom. And the last one is um, God hates certain things like strife, discord, um, all those things, but we're to guard our heart against those things. And the enemy likes to stir that among the brethren. Amen. Good stuff. Anybody want? Anybody get something from Heather's? 
Yay! Yeah. Sister Joyce, I think she wants to go next. She's like, let me have that thing. Get it over with. <laughs> Get it over with. <laughs> I, I'm not very good at talking around people, so I said, I have learned how to keep my heart right, keep on loving the Lord, and not let anyone change it. Amen. Praise God. Next one said, keep the faith and listening to what God has to say and not what anybody else has to say. Praise God. And also use wisdom. Amen. And the next one is when I promise the Lord God something, and I keep that promise to live for God and God only. Man, that's some Amen. good nuggets right there, Sister <laughs> Joyce. Gotta get you shot. Says, man, I like they're, they're going. They're like, I don't want to be last. <laughs> Somebody already took one of mine, so <laughs> well, actually two of them. Um, I had the, the Proverbs is a book, book of wisdom and it's a road map. And so if we choose to follow the road map and not look at it as a set of rules, it, it'll guide us through the, the landmines and it'll lead us to a blessed life. Amen. And that starts with information that once we put it in, it comes into revelation and goes into transformation. Yes. And, um, um, and it's it's not true wisdom if you only focus on the good stuff. You got to also focus on you know the do nots. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. that's some good wisdom right there. Um, and then I had the the seven deadly sins and one that God finds detestable. Um, matter of fact, makes you want to throw up in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, and then, it's in there. And then also, this was more. I mean, I already knew this, but it was more of a revelation. And don't be slave to the lender, which I mean, I knew that, and you know, and and, and it really was what I'm looking for. It really set in when you explain some of the other things that where we take on other people's debts without realizing it. So, yeah, yeah, and then you're you you become enslaved to that thing, that that person. They they own you. I think me and AT and T is about to have a divorce. <laughs> That was all in good fun. Please don't take me. <laughs> Sister, Sister Shauna. Um, I got some more wisdom as well. And one of the things is it comes from the Proverbs. <coughs> and that uh, he'll freely give us the wisdom. And we need to make sure that we don't walk away from it. Because it is a choice to walk away from the wisdom. Um, that the Word of God is a light to our feet. And we, if we don't study the Word, then we're not realizing what the right and what the wrong is. We're not letting Him. Minister to us, minister to us, and pour into us. We're not having that 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 intimate relationship. We're not doing that because we're more shutting that word off and allowing it to get to us to become a revelation. And that uh, we can choose where we set our eyes. And when we choose to keep them on God, then we actually will stay out of trouble. We're choosing to stay out of trouble. Amen. Good stuff. Amen. Anybody glean anything from that? Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you want to go next, Brother John? Yes, All right. Um, one of the first things I got is uh, hold fast to God's Word, seek wisdom, and get understanding. And what that has done for me, is it has brought me back to the church. Amen. Um, and one of the next things... Um, that I got and it is really a gift from God, that discernment thing. I have eyes that just don't look but truly see and ears that just don't hear but really listen. Mm -hmm. um, so that has, it's really kept me out of a lot of trouble um, because it's it's kind of easy to tell whether somebody is real or they're just blowing smoke. It, you know, and that's a good thing for me because yeah. I've had a lot of smoke blown at me. And sometimes it's Hard to see through. Yeah. So, you know, um, so I, I, I'm really enjoying what's uh, what's happening in Proverbs, and I'm looking forward to the next chapter. Hey man, it's going to be good stuff. Man, are y'all hearing, Brother Kevin's hands up? Are y'all hearing how much this wisdom in six chapters has impacted people's lives? Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing the same stuff I'm hearing? I mean, this is powerful. This ain't just like. Sunday school had a little, I, I read my, this is life changing, forever altering, improving your life, not because we had a motivational speaker, but because we 
dug in and expounded upon the Word of God. I'll, I'll stop. I could almost feel my shout coming here. Brother Kent. Watch what you think on it. Godly things will keep you away from trouble. Amen. <coughs> also, do the balance. Do the balance. Do something that is That's right. too pleasing. Look away. That's right. Especially if it isn't Amen. Do the balance. Divert your eyes. Look on something right. Who wants to go next? Some of you are like, is he going to make me go at all? I'm going to wait and find out. Sister Dib is up. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And, um, for me, I was I began to take more time than normal to focus on God's Word and what God had to say. And once... Um, and how He has helped me to better understand and help me to walk away or to run away from situations that I've come into and uh, also allowing the Holy Spirit to help me look smart. Hey. And, uh, um, when wisdom enters into uh, the heart and knowledge is pleasant to the soul, um, it's helped me to become more teachable and um, taking thoughts captive because the issues of life flows through our heart. And what flows through our heart comes out of our mouth. Oh man, that's good stuff. Um, I just, that brought back that whole nice teaching just flooded in. Like, man, that was good. Steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee on the right path. We've been given the tools and the road map for our path to take and we won't stumble when we um, follow and it's so true I mean God has if we stop and think God has given us the tools and he's given us a road map in every detail of our life not just some of it but all of it amen great stuff amen. All right, who wants to go next Brother Keith, is that your hand? I'm not trying to. <laughs> if it was an auction, you'd have been had. <laughs> I learned how to stay more grounded in, in the Lord. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, usually, if if you don't continually feed that spirit, it's just like today, Bible study. And then now, on Sunday school, I get filled up. And I go over my notes all the way to Wednesday because my batteries are going down. And I got to come back in and get charged up by the words, you know, and the instructions. And, you know, it's always the, uh, we slow the anger, you know, be more compassionate to uh, other people. Hey, Amen. You know, uh, don't be so quick to judge anybody because you really don't know the whole story. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, and for me personally, you know, he, showed up and showed out in my life, so I, I can't be nothing but grateful and faithful in what I do. Amen. You know, that makes me a better person. That makes me get up in the morning and smile. It, you know, how to encourage yourself. You know, sometimes we're not going to be anybody around. Right. That's right. And you know, you, you know, you can uplift yourself in the Lord, you know. Yeah. That's right. But that's where everything comes from anyway. So why would you sidestep that issue? Amen. Good right. stuff. Great yeah. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. I think Rachel's up. <laughs> she somewhat actually had a hand. <laughs> she did. I, I just read. Amen. Just that God will always uh, give you a way out or a way through, and He never leaves you or He'll never leave us. Amen. Good stuff. Amen. Good stuff. Do you know? I want to. I just want to point out. That, why this is all so cool because you guys didn't have weeks to prepare mm -hmm. you didn't have a long time to get it out you literally all this came from what was this is what's in you this is what's working this is that means it didn't you didn't just hear the word it became it, it, it did but you heard the information then it went where what does sister Becky say she brought revelation, revelation and transformation and if it hadn't become a transformation in your life, you still wouldn't remember it. You wouldn't have been able to go, bam, this is what I got. 
Because these are things that you're practicing. These are things that you've put in to practice in your life. That you said, man, this was the Word of God. Amen? And so, that to me, you know, I know this is a little unorthodox, maybe, maybe not, who knows. But the point is, is that God, when you read, do you realize, realize that it just in this, I know we've been, it takes us a while to go through, but six chapters, look how much it impacted everybody's life here. Look how much, I mean, it totally changed them. When they were at, when you guys were asked in just a few moment, minutes to give a what you got, you were able to, you didn't have to go, well, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> now, we've all been there. You know, you're like, he wants what? I don't even know what he's talking about. I was sleeping through that. <laughs> no, but seriously, but when it becomes part of who you are, it's not work to bring out. And I believe the Lord has wanted us to realize just how much has been deposited. Not for my glory, not for His, but for His glory. And for you guys, maybe even just to realize how much it's impacting your life. You know, sometimes sometimes when you get off work on Wednesday nights, it's real tempting just to go home and click the recliner back. You do some mechanic work. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to ask me at church. <laughs> you know? And if he said, you know, everybody has those days when you got to say, you got to talk to the old flesh man and say, no, we're going to church. I don't really care how you feel. I didn't ask you for your opinion. I'm taking you to church because you, I definitely need a talking to, trying to talk me into <laughs> staying home. <laughs> and then you realize, I see the, I see the hands I get to, and then you realize, so when you come, you realize, man, I'm getting something out of it. It's changing my life. It's impacting my life. And so maybe the next time, or whatever the circumstance is, or just whatever, you realize, it's good to realize the fruit and the benefits of what you're doing. You're not just coming to church to say you came to church. You're not just having, we're not just having a religious service. It took less than 15 minutes for everybody in the church that's been here to come up with something, fruit from just this Bible study. Only God can do things like that, the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so you all don't forget it. I hope that encourages you. I think the Holy Ghost had some other things He wanted to bring out. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I believe there were some personal connections and thoughts that the Holy Spirit was doing as we did it as He was bringing it up that He wanted to do that are not meant to be discussed uh, publicly. But I believe He had His way tonight. Amen. It, did it, how many were encouraged to hear all the fruit? And how many was like, it may not have been your nuggets that came up with you, but when you heard somebody else's, you're like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was good. And it all just came flipping. Like, you know, people talk about, like, wow, you know, I, mean, I, would, I get to be a participant just like you all, you know, the Holy Ghost flows through. And if I had to ask one of the things that, one of the coolest things I've, I've personally got out of this study was in the very beginning, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me about teaching Proverbs, and He said, if you'll expound, you know, anybody ever tried to learn another language? You start off with like letters, syllables. I mean, you don't even start with whole words. And then you finally get up to some of the whole words, and then you can speak broken something, but it's not you're not communicating really. And, you know, that's what it's like the Holy Spirit to try to communicate between us without having full of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. I can show you that in the Word. So the more wisdom or Word we get in us, the more vocabulary we give the Holy Ghost to be able to speak to us and download into us. You know, he, God desires to talk to His people. He desires to come. When I was a young man, young minister, you know, I'd get one word and I'd spend two weeks trying to pray out for what in the world God was talking about. But as I've matured and got in more of the wisdom of God, I can hear clearly not just for myself, but others. I just hear what he says because I've given him a lot more vocabulary. And God said, I want you to teach Proverbs because he said, I want you to give them more wisdom so they have more vocabulary so I can communicate with them. And that was the first time that God had ever shared that nugget with me when I started this study. So that is something that I got that was life-changing. I'm like, Wow, God, you just connected all that together, and that is cool. I will never look at it the same. Because sometimes you think about getting this stuff, it's like work. You know, sometimes you're like, what's the point behind all of it, you know? But man, you know, 
everything God does has a purpose and a plan. So I pray that you are encouraged tonight. I pray that it that it minister to you. And listen, like I said, they're all out there, all the sessions. You can go find them. I mean, there's lots of different avenues. But uh, but not Apple. <laughs> Apple wants to charge me a fortune. Because I happen to actually be the developer. I made the app. And so then they think if you become a developer on them, they want to think you're making money or whatever. Anyways, they want $2,500 for me to put it in the store. I said, no, thank you. Google wanted $25. <laughs> So, much, much more. Now that my God has a cattle on a thousand hills, if He wants me to put it in the Apple store, I'm more than happy. He'll provide the funds. But I didn't feel led to take all little resources of not, not little work, help me work this through. I didn't feel like putting God's, I thought God's resources were put together much better work elsewhere than giving Apple $2,500. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, you know why? You know why uh, God made Eve from Adam's rib, right? Because if He'd made them from the dirt, they'd always been trying to compete against each other. He said He made Adam, He made Eve from the rib because it was the closest thing to, to Adam's heart. And so then it, it says two shall become one. So now they're not two separate beings trying to compete against each other. He brought them from the same being, meaning they were supposed to be. The two shall become one, and he and he put he took him the closest thing he could from, from Adam's heart. So you know, Adam was in trouble already from the get go. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> some some of some some of our new people. Are, what's, well, no, the Holy Ghost. Listen, some nights it's okay to have fun. Tonight we've studied, we've done nuggets, but that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit can't move. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength, right? Has anybody laughed yet tonight? Has anybody smiled? Did anybody get some revelation tonight? Then guess what you did? You had church. You were ministered to. When you, when you come out of here, I mean, some of you may be shaking your head saying, man. <laughs> so Y'all pray for me, man. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, since enemies tried to kill me over the last few years, I think that's just becoming my standard form. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God.